Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of That's All Funny, uh, episode number 534, Shut the front door, um, we're here, we're queer, get used to it, no, it's, it's another day, what, what are we at, what is today, Tuesday, I guess it's Tuesday, <laughs> I think so, yeah, um, it's not Wednesday yet, it's Tuesday, um, it's just another day of chilling i know i'm going back to work uh finished the terms for school that went well i think i got a's which is pretty cool uh thank you thank you thank you thank you very much uh the son it's coming up without him um yeah no so just here chilling trying to get through the week i try to play more games you know i, I played an indie game called uh, inside the labs um i post that up this weekend it's fun. It's a little like multiplayer. There, there's really like no one online with it, which I, you know, see if it, people get online. But I was playing through it. It's pretty creepy and fun. Let me see that. Uh, I'm gonna play some other games. Uh, do you'll see an episode today of uh, Tits and Areolas. Tune into that at eight o'clock central on the YouTube channel, YouTube.com/slash at Lorenzo Areola. We're being mint salad. Talk about a movie, brother. That's fun. It's fun. It's it's all fun. It's great. It's great. Be great. Be great. We're great. Anyways, let's talk about the news here because there's a lot of uh, weird news going on. I don't want to talk about like yesterday with sandwiches and shit. Even though that was fun. Uh, I'll, I'm sure I'll find other shit to talk about eventually. What do y'all want to talk about? Let's uh, yeah, talk about what do you want to... Here's some news here. A large number of... 830,000 salmon fry die after release into California River. I don't know what a salmon fry is. I guess it's a type of fish. But a large number of around 830,000 salmon fry released into Northern California's Klamath River are believed to have died after suffering bu gas bubble disease. Uh, this condition is caused by a severe change in pressure. <laughs> that that's i don't know if you'd call that a disease that's just kind of like us that's a severe change in pressure like that's not biological or anything right that's just like a more of a physical change i don't know i wouldn't call that a, a disease you're making it seem like it was it wasn't preventable but it was you know if y'all just like fucking thought before doing it but anyway so this was a $35 million project designed to support salmon populations into the river once it is fully undammed. It was a uh, part of the Fall Creek fish hatchery. Um, they tried to put them there and they said a lot of fish died. They are not clear of how many of the 830,000 died, but it was a very high mortality rate. I remember when I was a kid, we had a fish hatchery in town there in, uh, in Uvalde. And I, I, there was, I never got to go to it. There was one day where we had a field trip and I had my fucking thing signed to go, like my permission slip. And I woke up late and the bus didn't pick me up. And I was really bummed about that. And I didn't get to go to the fish hatchery. And so I never went to the fish hatchery there in town. And it's a sad day because I wanted to. Go fishing. That's probably why I'm not a fisherman now. I never learned how to fish because I didn't, as a kid, go to the fucking fish hatchery. What a shame, right? My parents are terrible. They didn't wake me up. Wake me up. Well, son, it's coming up without him. Um, but yeah, chalk this up to uh, dumbasses who don't know how to like, oh, maybe the change in pressure will fuck. Nah, they're, they're like, nah, dude, they're fish. They'll be fine. It's regular water, and then like all of them die. Uh, whatever, dumbasses. Um, moving on to something. No, what, what, what? We have another scientist thing here. Speaking of scientists, scientists have used cells from fluid drawn during pregnancy to grow mini lungs and other organs. And um, scientists have created mini organs from cells floating in the fluid that surround a fetus in the womb. An advance they believe could open up new areas of prenatal medicine. Mini organs or organoids are simply are tiny simplified structures that could be used to test new medical treatments or study 
how the real organs they mimic work, whether they are healthy or diseased. So, I mean, this is going to make pregnancy fluid more valuable, and this is going to make people not want to, like, have abortions anymore. Or, you know, the government's going to push for, uh, let's not abort babies. We need that uh, pregnant fluid that comes out of your body when you squirt, and um, we can make tiny organs out of it for our little people. I don't know if they mean tiny, like, for midgets or for small people or for, like, you know, maybe rats or, like, teacup puppies. I don't know. I, I get what they're going with, though. Like, they can make tiny organs. So, essentially, they want to make turn that into, oh, okay, if we can make tiny organs, we can test drugs on those tiny portions of drugs and know on the bigger organs how they work out. You know, I get it. But, um, again, we're playing God here. <laughs> and it's going to make the price of pregnancy fluid grow uh, go up, okay? Which I don't know how much pregnancy fluid was worth before. Like, how much was it for a quart? You know, <laughs> fucking, I don't know, about a quart. Um, I'm not sure how, how to, I, I don't care. I don't create pregnancy fluid. I'm a big dude. I don't need tiny organs. What are we going to do? Are we going to, like, create giant women so that we can take their pregnant fluid and create regular size organs um this just delves into the whole uh playing god type thing and at least they're doing better shit than that fish hatchery people who just genocided a bunch of fish for no reason just because they're dumbasses you know uh but whatever we'll see how this works out i mean again i i this sounds like a resident evil plot waiting to go down but uh, I'm hopeful, <laughs> I, I guess. I don't know. Uh, what is this? Oh, speaking of um, creepy things, I don't know. Now everyone can edit their Instagram DMs. This is news. Everyone can edit their Instagram DMs as long as you do it within 15 minutes. So if, uh, you know, you were messaging a girl and she said uh, she was 14, you could be like, nah, you're joking. You're police, JK within the 15 minutes of um getting caught by these predator catchers because you know that's all instagram's for is um there's not even kids on there anymore there's just predators and people pretending to be children to catch those predators <laughs> it's not even a real place anymore it's just people pretending uh to be people or human or subhuman or whatever we we uh what what's the lowest bar nowadays you know what i mean instead of just being great you should be great why aren't you great you fucking faggots um but now nah, now you can edit your dms great this is a cool uh feature for uh i don't know instagram i don't know i i don't i don't really i don't know i i'm trying to think of any like dms i've done that were like oh, shit, I should edit that or take it back. Uh, and I really haven't done anything like that risque. I, I really haven't, no. Like, I mean, yeah, I just said, like, the F word a little while ago, but, you know, I call myself that all the time when I wake up. It, it, it's my mom's voice echoing in my head. Um, why are you just like your father? Why are you just like your father? You're just like your fucking father. You're gay just like your father, you know? It's just echoing in my head. The son, it's coming up without him. Uh, you got Chantecl Chanticleer, you got to crow, and you got to crow now. The son, it's coming up without him. You're just like your father. You're just like your father. Chanticleer, you got to crow, and you got to crow now. <laughs> uh. Next here on the news, EA Sports announces over 11,000 athletes have accepted NIL deal for its college football video game. And, I mean, I think this is pretty crazy news because there's a reason I, I, I've kind of like, you know, I've, I've been not, not necessarily in the reselling game. That's like a huge thing right now, reselling video games, blah, blah, blah. But I know a little bit about it, right? Like, I've resold video games. Uh, I've sold plate sets. I've sold a lot of random shit on eBay, right? Boulets. Uh, 
Jewish baby teeth. Uh, no, I, I, I just buy that. I don't sell it. But if you um, if you look for the EA NCAA college games, they stopped making them at a certain point. Uh, I forget what year, but that one's like super expensive, right? That one's like 90 to $120, which it retailed brand new at 60 but however many years ago, because there was a point where EA was getting money from these college athletes, right? Using their names and likenesses, but the athletes weren't being compensated. And there was like no law for that. It was pretty fucked up. Like your college athlete, your names in this game you're being played as your your likeness whatever and you're not allowed to be compensated because there's a law saying you aren't but somehow the colleges are making the money off of you right because that's how it was and eventually um they i think the athletes like asked for money or tried to sue so ea was like well fuck it we'll not we'll just not make a fucking game so they stopped making that game it's not worth it to them, I guess, right? But now they're, uh, you know, since football's back, baby, college football especially, it's, like, popular, I guess, again. It's been popular, but I guess more so, um, especially with uh, betting parlays and stuff that I'm into, but I haven't gotten into football. Um, it's I'm all about basketball, even college basketball. I don't know about female college basketball because I don't really know a lot about that, but they, um, th- they've passed new laws where, athletes can make money uh college athletes can make money off of their name now they can profit from it uh legally and this like changes everything because man you think of personalities that were in college that were like at the top of the world uh for instance like i could think of like tim tebow when he was in college he was a big deal he could have already been a millionaire like in college but he couldn't make any money off his name uh technically or johnny manzel uh i know he's like from texas here or whatever he was a big deal dude he could have made all this money until like he got drafted and then he ended up being a bust and now he's like uh, a a walking joke or a walking cautionary tale on you know being drafted before you finish college or whatever but he could have like profited off of that big time like if he had that same opportunity uh let alone all these other athletes right i couldn't t- those are just a couple examples i couldn't tell you i'm sure there are million millions millions and millions no like a, a ton more examples of that that if they were able to make money in college they would have like already been millionaires before having to even go to the nfl so they wouldn't have even cared to like go to the draft they would have just fucking uh, stayed in college you know like i'm sure i don't know if it's the same with like uh college uh nba i mean college basketball i take it back but we'll see i'm sure it is the same thing you know they're probably gonna end up getting a deal with that too and make some sort of ncaa basketball game and you know people like uh that zion williamson that uh big old black dude he was like a big deal before he got drafted so he's like a good example of him that could have made a ton of money before, you know, uh, or the, the mellows. No, they, they weren't in college. They just got drafted, whatever. But I think that's interesting. I wanted to bring it up, talk about it. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> I guess, you know, uh, what was this? Oh, lastly here, speaking of uh, money making football and all that other stuff, I guess, I don't know. This is Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is related to famed poet Emily Dickinson, and now it all makes sense. So uh, I know Taylor Swift does have an album coming out called The Tortured Poets Department, which, I mean, Jesus, she's getting more and more um, dramatic, right? But I'll listen to it. Her uh, her last album, I don't remember if it was Midnight's or something else. It was okay. It was okay. (laughs) It's not the billion-dollar tour I think it deserves to be to where it made billions of dollars or a billion dollars or whatever, but it was okay. It was an okay album, right? Anyway, the company Ancestry, which helps trace genealogy, has found evidence that Swift is distantly related to famed poet Emily Dickinson, and they put on their Instagram account, we need to calm down, but how can we when we have big news? Renowned American poets... 
Uh, Taylor Swift and Emily Dickinson are six sixth cousins, three times removed, and I don't know like how that fucking works on the family tree. Like, like I mean, here I am talking sh- talking shit to myself because I'm you know attracted to my third cousin. But how does this work out with the whole um? Six cousins twice from re- three times removed. Like, what the fuck does removed mean? And how are they removed three times? And like, is there something I could do, you know, to win my cousin back? And is it a bad thing that I'm more like not a fan of Emily Dickinson and more a fan of Charlotte Perkins Gilman? Like, what what is you see how I'm conflicted with all this, right? How a lot of emotions are going through me <laughs> with this news, that this breaking fucking news that she's related to Emily Dickinson as cousins, whatever, whatever. Makes no sense to me, but whatever. What do I know, right? I'm just, I'm just a fucking rooster trying to live on the farm. Um, I feel like, you know, if I crow, the sun comes out. But apparently it doesn't because I woke up late, didn't go to the fish hatchery. The fucking sun came up without me crowing. And now all the fucking animals on the farm think I'm fake. I'm a sham because the sun comes up without me crowing. But, you know, if I leave, where am I going to go? Am I going to go, you know, start a rock and roll career and hit it big? And then the, the, the people on the farm realize, oh, shit, the sun did come up it we need him to crow uh shanna clear you gotta crow and you gotta crow now the uh, let's go up without him. <laughs> you should read the yellow wallpaper if you haven't read it um it's a very it's a very good short story by charlotte perkins gilman very good i always think about it when i think about my mother and how you know, crazy she is, and think about maybe, I remember one of the bathrooms in the house had yellow wallpaper, no, like, I don't know if it was yellow, it was, it had hints of yellow, maybe it was yellow from the mold, (laughs) I remember we had this wallpaper in one of the restrooms that we lived in, that had a, like, naked, with, like, naked caricatures on it, like, it had like the wallpaper was caricatures of like a woman or a man in a bathroom, you know, because if it's theme, because it's a bathroom, right? But there were caricatures of them like brushing their teeth or they're in the bathtub and there's a shower or they're, um, you know, on the toilet and it had them like naked. And I would see like these caricatures of a naked woman or whatever uh, with, you know, again, hints of yellow, and then this was the restroom too that we had three restrooms in the house there was one upstairs that never got finished it was just like half a shower and a hole for the toilet there was a restroom that restroom I'm talking about with the weird wallpaper in the front that I hated going into cuz there was like a rat that lived in it in the in the closet and it would pop out every now and then and like sitting on the toilet and if you're staring at the shower and you see just a rat pop out, you trip out like because you're you're sitting on the toilet. You're at you're like you're most defenseless when you're on the toilet. And if you see a rat like you, you can't really do much other than like run. But your pants are down and then your butt's dirty from pooping. So you got to kind of hurry. You're on this like time limit, you know, and the other restroom we had, which we would mostly use the. The toilet was fucked up, so I had to, like, rig it to where it worked, but we used, like, I don't remember what I used, like, a string to pull it instead of a fucking toilet thing. It was a string, like a, not a not a cloth string. It was, like, almost like a, a wire, you know, but, like, a rubber wire. I had that, and then the ceiling was caved in. And fucked up to where when it rained, you could feel water droplets coming onto you. So when you'd sit on the toilet and if it rained outside, you would feel it raining on you inside the restroom. And that shower, when you would use it, sometimes, I forget, it was like at least 
two out of every 10 times you took a shower, you would get electrocuted. And I have no idea like how or why. Like, I don't know what, what caused us to get electrocuted in the shower. I, I have no idea still to this day. And there must have been like a loose wire rubbing against the tub or something somewhere, right? Uh, but yeah, it, it was... It, <laughs> <laughs> you had clear you got a crow you got a crow now no it was it was life um i thankful for where i'm at now but that i'm still like going through shit like anxiety and all that we you know as we grow older our problems change we change and things you know it's not that they get easier they just our problems become different you know what i mean as we get older you know like uh my feet are swelling uh, and, uh, you know, I can't crow as loud as I used to. You got to crow. You got to crow now. And I, I don't know. I'm I'm just tired. I'm sick. I, I'm going to drink some more iced coffee with my uh, fucking clonazepam and take a nap for work the next day, you know. But, yeah. I, um, uh, oh, where's the music, right? I need to play the music. Uh, I want to thank you for listening to That's All Funny, the podcast uh, available anywhere. Podcasts are available. Just search That's All Funny. Uh, I have my other podcast with my buddy Gabe called That's All Cafe, where we talk about wrestling and other wacky stuff. It's fun. Comes out every Mondays. Uh, you can listen to that anywhere podcasts are available. Just search That's All Cafe. Or you can see both of those on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Lorenzo Ariola, where we have uh, videos of that, other random videos of stuff like me playing games and weird videos. I also do a live show every Tuesdays with the wonderful Mint Salad, uh, where we talk about movies and play a game it's called tits and areolas you can catch that tuesdays usually at eight o'clock central nine o'clock eastern live on the youtube channel if you want to see older episodes of that archive check out either of our patreons if you want to support this podcast check out uh patreon.com slash lorenzo areola uh, you get early episodes bonus episodes archive episodes deleted episodes other bonus stuff uh help support you know the podcast or if you want to buy any merch for the podcast check out www.retrohorrorinc.com We've got merch there, uh, prints, stick, stickers, and T-shirts by the great artist at Retro Horror Inc. on Instagram. Help uh, Check him out. Um, he's a Bret Hart graphic art. If you want to get something for your art, check it out. But thank you for my listeners, my Patreon supporters. 